Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Inflation, what is it? What's the real rate? What are we seeing today? The first thing I want to look at is real-time inflation. How can you actually see what it is right now today? I'll show you that. The second thing is this is getting real. Look around you, left, right, and center. Inflation is increasing. We'll look at that news as well as the third being real money. What's going on? Everything is all about reality today. I'll give you the ins and outs. Let's begin right here. The true rate of inflation is very hard to diagnose if we have the wrong source, the wrong inputs. Of course, you're not going to get an accurate description of what that is. First, I want to separate what inflation is. Now, when we talk about that in general, what we are saying is price inflation. What we're looking at is an increase in the prices that you pay for a particular item or service. But, you know, you look at it in a different way. Inflation is the increase in the money supply. So if the money supply goes up, that's inflation. If the money supply goes down, that's deflation. But when you're hearing about it in the news and you're hearing other people talk, they're not going to refer to it in that way. It's going to be price inflation. So we want to make that distinction, of course, and I've made that distinction a hundred times before. But for the purposes of this video, let's talk about inflation as price inflation. We know what's going on, quantitative easing. We know what's happening with the devaluation of the currency. And we understand that prices don't rise, money loses value. Okay, let's put that in the back of our minds. We know that. But when we want to track inflation as it as it is price inflation it's difficult as i've said before because you know if you have tuition for instance and you measure that back in 1970 you measure that today you see the price has gone up we know this okay but what if you never went to school for instance well you wouldn't be paying that and therefore wouldn't experience that inflation so this really depends on the person on the family but when you look at these inflation rates, we have to kind of generalize. We have to sort of form a little bit of that mentality or else it, it's just impossible to discuss. So when we measure it, we can look at the CPI, CPI, we can look at the PCE, we can look at any number of government indicators, or we can look at something like shadow stats. Shadow stats provides their own rate, recalculating based on old techniques, the way they used to do it prior to the manipulation. But what about if we actually tracked the prices and then consistently measured them? Well, this is true inflation. It is the website app, A-P-P -P dot true, spelled T-R-U, flation dot com. And so uh, links will be in the description under the sources. You could see it for yourself right here, true inflation rate. If I could zoom in, get you a better look at that. You could see it over the past year. You could see it over the past five days, even if you want. But looking at it over the past year, you could see where it's been. 8.21% in the second quarter of 2021. And it's going up and up and up. And it breaks it down. True inflation category, year over year growth. Food, obviously on the top of that, housing, transportation, medical care, education, and so on. It breaks it down. Apparently, they use, I saw a moment ago, they break it down either, you know, there's tens of thousands of different data points that they're constantly tracking on a daily basis or, you know, whenever that new information comes out and then adding it. And so we can get a much more accurate and real-time indicator of inflation. I think this is fantastic, and I will be referring to this from now on. Okay, you could see true inflation category importance. This is food, 13.9%, breaking it down, corn, wheat, soybeans, and so on. Current day, 29%, year-to-date, 16.2%. And you could see all of that. Look at medical care, breaks that down as well over the best of five days, but you look at it over the past year, what has been happening, transportation over the past year, and so on. Okay, 
look at this app dot true t r u in trueflation dot com to see it for yourself. This is the real time. This is fantastic to see. Do you experience higher inflation than this? Than what this website tells you? Thirteen point five percent at this time. Are you experiencing higher than that inflation? Let me know. Put in the comments below. Let's discuss that. Now we need to talk about how this is getting real. Chinese indexes drop at least two percent after data shows that China producer inflation is surging. So you've got the CPI, consumer prices. Then there's the PPI, producer prices. And what happens if you know somebody's trying to make I don't know. Let's just make a car, okay? And they need steel to make that car. Well, what if the steel is more expensive? Well, then the producers, the manufacturers, the suppliers are all going to have higher input costs, meaning consumer prices will then down the line go up. At least that's the thought, anyway. Well, this continues to surge. This goes up at a time in which the economy is clearly, very evidently. Slowing down, so you can see that's having a direct impact at the time of this recording. I'm looking at it down 2.45 percent uh, in Hong Kong, but uh, we will see what happens. You know, these markets. By the time you're watching it, it could be in the complete opposite direction. But the point is, markets reacted negatively to it. Not to mention the fact of, of the lockdowns happening in Shanghai, which I think we will talk about in a second. Yes, in the next article. The more notable fact is that the big gap between the CPI and the PPI that indicates that pricing power amongst the most companies in China is weak, and they're taking a hit on the margins. I think it could be a lagging indicator, so we'll see what happens. What about this? Snoring colleagues brushing teeth with the boss inside Shanghai's big office sleepover. Amid sudden quarantines, staff at the banks, trading venues, and investment firms take the cots and sleeping bags to ensure business continuity. You don't go home; you now live at work. Okay, the work-life balance. Yeah, I guess it's balanced in the same building or at the same desk. This is what's happening. This has a obviously there's a direct impact on the people there, but understand that the port in Shanghai is closed, most important port in the world. Stuff is not going to move out of this country at the rate it was before. We've got a severe slowdown. This is supposed to be the time where things start getting easier, easier into the summer, and then as we move into the fall, it starts to get tighter. And now what? Tight again. You've got the situation with Ukraine and Russia. You know that area. Real issues going on with trade. They're just avoiding it entirely.、Uh, and now we have again with China. All right. Look at this. With oil, you know the prices of oil. You've seen it yourself. U.S. shale producers are not ramping up output despite the sharp price rally, and I think there's a concern here that hey, they're going to shut us down as soon as we get you know this these things up and running. It's going to crush us. The money is flowing into green energy. That's where the business is going, and so on. There are different reasons for it. At the bottom, global total petroleum onshore stocks over global demand, and this has decided to fall to a great degree. So it depends, but、uh, you know what I wanted to just acknowledge the fact that inventories are falling on a lot of different commodities. Oil happens to be one of those. Where we see a lot of inflation right now today, at least superficially within you know the the, the data, you know the indicators. Wages, wages have gone up. Okay, obviously with inflation, this they haven't gone up. I'm just talking about the number nominally. Goldman Sachs wage tracker is increasing now. Usually, when we do see that, there's a recession around that that region around that time frame. I mean, you could see this here. Okay, financial crisis, 2000, 2001, and to a great degree right now. Doesn't necessarily mean that when we see a spike that will happen, but here it is. Okay, what's happening with commodities right now has continued. I wanted to show you the fact that it's probably going to get a lot worse.、Uh, some people were triggered by those comments. 
that I made in previous videos, the interview with Mark Faber, which I'll link to at the end of this one. I'll link to that. I know it's long. Watch it at 2x. You can definitely watch that one at 2x and get it done in half the time. But this is going to be an issue here for at least the next couple of months, it looks like. Ukraine corn crop this year's harvest could fall to a decade low. Looking at that, I mean, it's just not good because the world really relies on grains coming from Ukraine, coming from Russia. And if suddenly there's not an export of that particular product for whatever reason, if it's sanctions, if it's tariffs, if it's anything, then of course that's going to impact you, the individual, and what you have to pay. And you might think, eh, I don't, my country doesn't get corn or wheat or anything from, from Ukraine or, or Russia. Well, guess what? Your country, wherever that is, buys it from that other country. And now that other country suddenly can get it. They start switching suppliers. And now we have a problem with supply and demand fundamentals. So what happens to the price? It's pushed up either directly or indirectly. This is interesting. If you want to check it out, pause the video or check out the sources. The history of energy transitions starting off before 1800 biomass. Burning stuff, right? We still use that today. No doubt about that. Hasn't really changed over the years, but we see that other things have. For example, oil. 1859, the first commercial oil well was drilled in Pennsylvania. Okay, then we go beyond that. Coal, they look at gas, nuclear, and renewables and just break it down. Okay, so I'm interested to see where that uh, fall, falls you know, goes into in the next, in the coming years, anyway, to say the least. Okay, looking at this real quick, I'm looking at what's happening in the stock market, and my goodness, big changes. Certainly, looking at the net leverage. Net leverage has actually declined considerably. Institutional investors have decided that, I want to reduce my risk today. You could see, according to Goldman Sachs, we are in extreme bear territory in terms of the sentiment, okay? So traders right now are really worried that uh, also uh, connects in with this sentiment indicator is down at the point where this considered to be light positioning. Okay, it's not overly light, but but it is considered light. And then we have this just showing you over Q1 what has happened: oil, energy, gold, utilities next along the, the lines, and then basically everything else was in the negative for Q1. Think about that. Think about that for a second. How crazy that is. Reminds me of 2018. Chipotle tests tortilla chip making robots to combat labor shortage. I mean, you could watch it for yourself. I could show you this right here, probably. Not going to be an issue. I, I think if you look at this while I'm talking, you can get a sense of what this is all about. But think about these jobs, Flippy the Robot, actually they show what looks like Flippy the Robot, doing these jobs, they can literally, for $30,000, replace two people. And it's not, you know, I mean, it's it's cutting, it's, it's very simple, basic tasks that are repeated over and over and over again. And that's the type of jobs that robots are good at. They can work 24 hours a day. They do not re require health care. They do not need a raise and so on. So anyway, I just want to bring that to you to show you this is going real fast. And they're, they're going to do that. They're going to do this. And so, you know, I think for a lot of people, we need to be concerned. We need to get smart. We need to stay ahead of the curve. We need to learn new skills. We need to have skills that cannot be replaced by robots, or at least we've got some time delay in between all that. I hope you appreciate the information. If you do, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.